I would really, really urge you this year, right, right at the beginning of the year, just ask yourself the question, how am I going to use current events in my seventh grade class or my fourth grade class or even my first grade class? How am I going to do that? And what, what, do, I, what do I want to accomplish? What's my intention? Because some of this can be very class specific. I don't teach a homeroom anymore, but uh, when I did teach a homeroom, I, I, you all know if, you, you, if you've done this, that you, every year there's a different set of students and they bring a different set of issues. Uh, you, there might be a few things that you want to correct, but think about it, what is my purpose? What do I actually want to accomplish this year? And I give you a few here. To, to stimulate an interest in, and I left the blank here because missions, um, i just give that as one, maybe even a specific mission. Maybe Africa, that's not particularly a mission, but a continent. Uh, but, but what, is there something that I would really like to focus on? See, that helps you to, to, to sort through the news right to begin with. If, if you know, oh, here's my purpose, here's where I'm pushing toward, uh, and then you know that you don't have to look at all this stuff. You can just get a couple of the pieces together, and oh, okay, there's something on, on South Africa or whatever, and I'll pull that right in here and, and, and use it, you know. To develop skills of discernment. I underscore this at 15 times because this is desperately, desperately, desperately needed. Uh, if you can help students to sort through, and again, I'm sorry that Donald Trump has made fake news popular, but the truth of the matter is all these years, there has been a lot of stuff put out there that just I don't know if it's so inaccurate as is it lets so much on set that, uh, that it turns out that you can interpret it very inaccurately. A third here, to aid in teaching geography or economics. That might be a particular purpose and is a buildup of knowledge and information that is useful downstream. Okay, so uh, again, just ask yourself that question and then direct it direct your accumulation of news stories or current events and, and, and move them forward from there. Uh, to, to indirectly affect media habits. That's a little bit related to what I just got done saying, but uh, and I'll have more to say about that here in a few moments. To teach civics, perhaps. Seriously, with the Donald Trump era, we're seeing an entire different approach to civics here in America. Uh, it's a, it's a civics of chaos, from what I can tell. And, and uh, some people think it's a brilliant chaos, and some people think it's a foolish chaos. And, uh, but it is chaos, from what I can tell. <laughs> okay, well, it's a, you don't want to spend all your time with it, but it's a, a, a great uh, teaching moment to ask yourself, so why is Donald Trump leading the nation? Why is he using the office of the presidency in the way he is? Okay, uh, without being, without being, improperly derogatory toward a political official and so forth and so on, but still raising the questions. To offer soft exposure to pop culture, what do I mean by that? Well, I think most of us have concern about, uh, well, at least I'm old enough to have concern about how much exposure my grandchildren have, but I'm not stupid, they need some. Uh, they have to have an awareness. I, if you're a parent here, I, one of the goals that Sheila and I always worked at was it, it actually deliberate planned exposure. So, so in other words, I would rather not just let it happen. I would rather actually choose the moments and choose the platform uh, where the exposure to pop culture is actually going to happen. Well, here's a good place. But if you wanted to just point at a couple of things now and then you could in pop culture, what's the terminology today? Back in my day, I've, it was it what's groovy. Today it's cool. and. I don't know what other terminology is, but those terms, you know, you get at the pieces of pop culture that matter to most people. Uh, to give students a working vocabulary of relevant terms for the times. I, you know, one of the easiest ways to, to prepare and teach current events is to focus on vocabulary. I just simply look at the news and choose out uh, 10 words, five words, four words. Uh, that are relatively, I don't know, they're either not understood well or they, they, they need a little, a little uh, development. Uh, just to use those 
four vocabulary words, it's five vocabulary words. You can quiz them easily, can talk about them easily. Uh, so rather than try really hard to get this really, really, really deep insight into this piece of news, we'll just pick out some, some words that are, that are applicable, trace it down a little bit, and, and use that. Just ask the students, do you know what, have you ever heard this? You know, put the term out there, and, and then uh, work on it a little bit. My main point is, if you want to get somewhere with current events this year, think about a purpose. What, what is it that you want to do? Now, sources uh, is probably a question that might come up in your mind. So but what are your sources? Here's just a couple guidelines. Is the source credible? And do they have integrity? I referenced some of my adult Mennonite brothers who they start, did you know such and such and such and fill in the blank? And no, I didn't know that, but I am wondering where in the world did you get that info? <laughs> where did that information come from? Because it, something sounds why go to me. In what ways is the source biased? Notice I do not suggest here of saying, is it biased? Because it is. Some of you are in CLP. A CLP printing? is going to be biased, I hope in a good direction. But I'm just saying, every, when I write, I have a bias, I know it. <laughs> uh, okay, and I'm going, to, I'm going to tend, that means I will almost automatically emphasize certain things and ignore some other things. Okay, now, it's good to know that up front, since I know that, and I can sort of tell you what my biases generally are. And since if you know your biases, and if you will commit them, I mean, confess them and admit them, you're much better shoes to, to balance it off when you're writing or when you're talking or whatever, because you know, I'm biased that way. Okay, well, just know that there's bias there. And it's a good idea to know what direction. And we'll take a look at an example or so here in just a moment. Does the source provide adequate context I have really, really, really become wary of blurbs and tweets. <laughs> very, very, very wary of this very short paragraph that's, that gives this piece of news or says such and such and such. It gives no context. And it's like, well, <laughs> uh, okay, so what does that mean? Uh, okay, and fourth, does the source act adequately and accurately interpret data. Be very, very wary, wary of data that just comes at you. I mean, the popular one right now is selling coffee. You know, if you drink four cups of coffee, that you, you, you'll live, I don't know, five years longer or something like that. Well, that's not what I was told over the years. That I have, Howard, I have lived long enough, to, and you have to, to see that some of this change so often that it's like, well, I, I'll, I become cynical, I'll just admit. Okay, when, when I see it, I say, well, give it five years. <laughs> and and that, that thing will change. Shun sensationalism, embrace substance. I've been talking to you about that. Don't forget something. The news people have a product. They're making money from it. They have a product that they want to promote. They want to sell it to you to begin with. Uh, and then second of all, they certainly have an agenda. Sensationalism sells. It intrigues. It draws you in. I just to resist it. Uh, There's a point here. Push away from image-based info, info pulled toward text-based info. You want to do an interesting study sometimes. Study, and some of you probably have studied this in depth. If you're into photography, if you study imaging deeply, those men and women who are taking those pictures for Google News or whoever it is are very highly trained about how to take a picture to create a certain emotional feel. They are really good at it. Uh, you study up on it just a little bit and, and, and it, uh, a picture can carry a freight load of stuff that really, it may be true, but it may well not be true as well. Take time to read the other side of the story. Now that is, that's a point to be made on the bias since I know that every article I read has a certain bias to it. Particularly on something very critical, I might pick up a magazine or something that, 
an article on the same issue, but from a different perspective, from the left side instead of the right side. Well, what do they say about it? And what is, their, what is their actually their view? This obviously calls for some maturity. I would not, I would not say that you should take that kind of thing, give it to an eighth grader, say, here, did you read this article? And read this article, and, and uh, it, it makes some sense. You might do that if your goal is for discernment, but you still would want to choose those very carefully. So, so what stories are you using here, or what accounts, and why are you using them? And, and you, you don't want to do damage here, but you, but you do want to help them to see the, the value here. And do not be consumed by news. Uh, you're looking at a person here be so, I, I can be consumed by news very easily. It, it, it takes, for me, I have to deliberately choose. Uh, you see all these magazines that I like to read in uh, and, and uh, like to look at the news and I, I'm just naturally curious about such things, but I curb it. <laughs> I tried to direct it into, into uh, I don't know, some good channels. And if you can pass that along to your students.